Okay, so let us begin. The topic that we're going to cover now is Lead Difficult Conversation, BSPC MM412. That's our unit number four on this day three of block two. Now, it's a very interesting topic, Lead Difficult Conversation. Um, say that one of your colleague is not following your instruction, a junior member, right, who is reporting you. What would you do? How do you handle that? Or someone has difference of opinion with you, what would you do? Right? How do you start the difficult conversation? Can we be very upfront and blunt and said, oops, you didn't hit your performance target, thank you very much. Or do we need to look a bit deeper into it? Saying that, hey, is everything all right with you? You've been underperforming for past several weeks. Let me know if I can help you. In your family, financially, you know, by taking some time off, you know, or sharing your burden, whatever it is. If someone has a um, difference of opinion, that could be for good. Like any conflict are normally for good. Yeah. But you need to look deeper into it. That's why learning the skills of difficult conversation is very important. So this unit describes skills and knowledge required to prepare, facilitate, and lead a difficult conversation. The unit applies to individuals who may work as managers and leaders and are required to lead difficult conversation in a workplace. They contribute well develop verbal and relationship building skill in having difficult conversation. There are three sections of the topic, preparing, facilitate, and follow up, obviously. The same thing goes with a meeting, the same thing goes with a conversation. You prepare for it, you conduct the scenario, conduct the meeting, and then you follow up and review what happened. Yeah? Number one, prepare for difficult conversation. So what is a difficult conversation? Okay. A conversation can be defined as difficult if they involve a topic that you do not want to raise. Right? Performance appraisal, for example. Right? It could be a pay rise. It could be a promotion. Like you are due for the promotion. You really worked hard for past several months, several years. Your manager and... Everyone senior to you is well aware whenever you talk about, sir, now it's my promotion time, isn't it? Or give me some pay rise. And they say, how about we talk it some other day? They're trying to avoid a difficult conversation. The reluctance arises due to the risk of conflict and hence many managers may seek to avoid raising them. These are some of the things about um, difficult conversation. It could be under a poor performance of staff in the meeting, the requirement of the role. Yeah, right, Ferris? Yeah. Low engagement or disengagement of staff members, difference of opinion, rejection of an idea or solution, mistakes or changes in a work condition of a role. Yeah, anything of this, right? It could be promotion, it could be like, hey, we are settling you in a new team or all that, yeah, would definitely be a part of difficult conversation. Identify difficult conversation requirement. In considering conversation requirement, you need to determine if a meeting is needed. I mean, don't raise meeting for every other issue, yeah? When an issue is temporary or minor or one of situation, you may determine not to raise it. That said, ensure you are seeking harmony over the risk of tension as discussed and an issue addressed early can be easily resolved. If you know something is going to come, right? Could be difficult conversation, could be promotion, could be some change of the team. I mean, addresses nicely and timely. Yeah. Once it's established that a conversation is required, the first step in a conversation is to identify and acknowledge the requirement and the fact that it will be difficult. The requirement of any difficult conversation will depend on the reason of conversation, who is involved, 
and the seriousness of the context. This factor will influence your planning around the requirements such as the objective of the conversation. Whatever you decide will affect the objective. Any legislative or your organization requirement, the leader of the conversation, who should be present, the parameter, any support system, the agenda, any logistic, like you guys are here, right? Maybe a flight was arranged. Maybe the accommodation is arranged, yeah? Informing the stakeholder, documentation, any style, direct, um, you know, affirmative, positive, delivery method, and the skills that you require. You need to also follow any policy procedure, any legislation. Okay, let's talk about the parameter here. Use discussion and questioning to identify the objective of the conversation. Identify the people or groups involved in the conversation and explore possible needs from the conversation and the agenda. Half of the things of this one will be similar to the meeting unit that we have done, prepare for meeting. Yeah, they will follow from that because for a conversation, either you are having a face-to-face discussion or you are conducting a meeting right if you are conducting a meeting obviously whatever we learned in the earlier two days will be similar to this unit yeah. then you decide the approach be direct be you know like who is else involved yeah and gather evidence and de develop supporting material now what should go in the content an agenda of discussion pointed with dot points for discussion and decision making a copy of the issue a presentation of the information a portfolio collection of work examples some letter records some forms or template and some brochures like all the resources right that you need yeah Next is preparing to solve the problem. This is just a template. I wish I could make it a bit bigger. And there you go. Right. So what is the issue? What is happening now? What is the problem? Why is the problem occurring? What are the options and what is the action? Example is, Engagement number have declined, right? Customer or student engagement number have declined, right? What is happening? Posts are not being scheduled. What's the problem? Time management. Everyone is too busy with the work, not giving them enough time, right? To dedicate um, some, dedicate some time to resolve it, right? Not enough time for the activity. What are the options? Either reduce the workload or increase more time. So allocate more time or allocate certain duties to the others. What is the action? Allocate more time. If you're already working for 40 or whatever the maximum number of hours, then allocating more time is not possible. And that's why there is an NA, not applicable. Right? Allocate certain duties to other staff members to attend further social media training. Supervisors to add social media to the KPI. So they need to enhance this so they can increase the number of posts and that will support the actual problem of engagement number. Yeah, so this was just a, a normal example of what can be done to solve a problem. The next is you have to plan the agenda. I mean, there is a lot to read on page uh, agenda, and that's why it's a learner's guide, page 21, which I'll be sharing with you guys, or it should be on my village as well. Yeah, organize the logistic, physical, and location setting. You need to be mindful how far is the location. Like I was saying the other day, I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday, the location has to be convenient. If the location is not convenient, the attendee will not come. You can set a, meet, a meeting in some western province of Solomons, which is very 
I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying an example, which is not that accessible. Then out of 10, maybe only five would attend. Yeah. Next thing is prepare the draft and meet any stakeholder requirement. Okay. In here, it's though similar to manage meeting unit, but manage meeting will have a particular purpose. Like this purpose is to solve the difficult conversation. Yeah, solve the issue. Okay, there is a bit to read, so I'll leave it for everyone to read this, please. Please read this. Done. Now, this is important. Why? Now we are analyzing the stakeholder. So what you are saying, you have to divide them into four parts. Divide your stakeholder into four parts. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, I went like this for purpose, okay? Number one, monitor, right? That's your competitors, right? People with no power, no interest. Here comes the interest, it's low, this is high, this is low, this is high. Same thing, low power and the high power. This is for power, this is for interest, yeah? What happens here? Low power, low interest. They don't have any power to influence any of the decisions that you might make. Okay? And they don't have any interest, like very minimum, very minimal, right? Any competitors, government department and representative organization, third party supplier will come in here. You just have to tell them very minimal right? People with high power, high interest are your key stakeholder. You need to manage them well, manage closely, inform them everything, like literally everything. Now, this two, three, and four, here you got a low interest, but very high power. Yeah. And up here, you got a high interest, but very low power. Yeah. This is your customer group. And this is your specific supplier who have very low interest, but they can really change how you function because they got a lot of power. If they don't supply you the goods, you won't be able to function. Yeah, so that's that comes here. Any product manager, suppliers, you need to keep them happy, keep them satisfied. 
Yeah. So this stakeholder analysis or stakeholder categorization will really help you that what you should talk, how much you should talk, whom you should involve. Yeah. And that's why I kept a lot of information here. Delivery. You have now gone through the following stages of planning. Sorry, it's a bit tiny. I can't really help that a bit. Okay. Identify the needs. Highlight the key points. Gather and collect the resources. So you identify already the needs. What are the needs of conversation? Then you highlighted key points. You gather and collected all the resources. Decide on a format, whether it's face-to-face, -face, whether it's a meeting, right? Prepare a draft. Get the feedback, logistic, and prepare for the delivery. This is where you are. Next is a communication time, whether it's a verbal, it's a non-verbal or a mix of it. How, how do you have eye contact? Do you want to look very angry or do you want to be calm? That's it's all right. You know, we all are the same. Let's go and solve it. This is all about communication time. There are five types of communication style. Assertive, aggressive, passive, aggressive, submissive and manipulative. Again, please read that. Now, let me explain each of it. Assertive adopts an even pitch and pace for communication, factually expressing needs and stating what they can do. Very good style. Yeah. Maintaining the pace, like not too high, not too low, the same pace. Right. And they are really admitting the need of resolving a conflict. Right. A win win thing. Aggressive, a harsh, Low pitch, fast pace, loud volume. When we are shouting at someone, it's the aggressive nature, isn't it? Yeah, aggressive style of communication. The next is passive aggressive. Adopts a quiet, even pace, but using language that one thing says one thing while the facial expression says the other. When you're saying like this, but I'm not angry at you. Yeah, you're already showing this thing. Right, even though you are verbally saying that you are not angry, but the way you are saying reveals that your facial expression says that thing. Yeah, when you are very angry, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, but you are demonstrating things which tells that you are not. Yeah, submission adopts a quiet, even pace, consistent pace to other demands and propose the outcome. Then manipulating. We know the word manipulation. Yeah. Use a range of skill like aggressive, passive aggressive to make the demand and achieve agreement, usually using a language and pace that makes other feel inferior, unable to contribute and input. So manipulative again not good. Yeah. But we might have to adopt one or the other style of communication um, just because you know. Um, of a situation. A leader may not give some freedom 
to their employee all the time. Sometimes you have to tell you that, my friend, whether you like it or not, this is the deadline, you are following it. That's it. Yeah. So you're not trying to be assertive that, oh, please, will you do it by that date? No, you need to follow some deadline. Yeah. Any question so far? You covered a good amount of slides, I just thought. Yeah, any question? Peter, sir, all good? Awesome. Right. Thank you, Ferris. Right. Um, cool. I try to make it as big as I can. I don't think I can make it any bigger. What I can do is copy this picture. No. Maybe control C. What we are saying here. There are different personality. And that's why there is different communication. Yeah. What are you saying? Big picture people prefer seeing and doing in fast paced environment, cop up well and improper extreme environment. Yeah. People based communication, as it says, prefer scaffolded or user lead. Detail oriented people prefers reading, listening, slow pace environment. And perform based communication prefer lockstep. And here are four major types of it. What we are saying is analytical, who likes numbers, figures, fact, direct language. People like me, I'm very much analytical, I would say. Yeah, I can't really make up a, a sentence, right? I mean, when I say make up in a way, I mean, like the English people, you know, um, I'm very plain when I'm saying, yeah, only a few sentence, few words, and that's what I say. Yeah. Intuitive who likes the solution and outcome, enjoys leading by example, sets goal because of the person using the individual uh, circumstances to reduce objection and phrase, prefer assertive tone. Yeah, I already shared in chat, maybe you need to zoom that file a bit. Then comes the person, personal thing, likes people and values and social emotion, puts feelings, everything in the first place ahead of the fact, is likely to be passive aggressive. Next comes functional. Yeah, also like the numbers and fact. So all this side is a performance base. That's why they will like numbers. Yeah, so if you look at that one, this is big picture people, you know, prefers doing and everything. So analytical is doing and everything and also performance base. Performance base and detail oriented is functional. People base and detail oriented is personal, right? Prefer seeing, doing and People-based communication is intuitive, yeah? It's a crossover thing. Again, you can kind of consider this FYI. I'll have to undo so many things. Okay, I think this is very cool. Right now, we're moving to the section two. I just now ask, so I think everyone's still comfortable. Yeah. Next is facilitate. So, you already prepared decently, spend decent time in preparing, and now we are facilitating a difficult conversation. Okay. In difficult conversation, you must stay focused on the plan, message, and objective. It is essential to be direct and clear about the reason for the conversation and to stay focused on a conversation, which is to get us suitable solution, resolution. Ensure that you remain objective, use the example, are open in your communication, use open question to gain understanding, adopt your delivery, and demonstrate convention and empathy. Who will explain me this word empathy? It's my favorite word. Empathy.
I mean, Google would know it, but we are not asking Google for everything, are we? Yeah. So empathy means it's um, when you consider others being sympathetic to others. Very um, good. Yeah, keeping others under consideration. Absolutely. Right. Um, empathy does not mean that I should not give you work. Right. We all have to work, isn't it? Whether we like it or not. Unless you win a lottery, that's a different story. Otherwise, we all have to work. So your manager, your boss need to give you some work, need to give you task. But if you miss a deadline by a day or two, unless it's super, super urgent and it will cost trillion dollar loss, otherwise, it's all right. If you're late someday, it's all right. Rather than saying, oh, why you are late by five minutes? I would say, this. Was, was there a bad traffic? And he would say, no, the traffic was fine, but it was just that I had to drop my kids. Yeah, or I had to take care of my family. It's fine. Yeah, I know it's a flu season everywhere, right? Um, we had it here. I think it's almost gone because we are approaching more summer. Yes, yeah, so if some of your family member is sick, you need time off. By all means, yes. But since I'm also reporting someone, I might need to ask my manager as well as a form of approval. But otherwise, it's fine. You are attending this Zoom session, whether you do it in just in this classroom or you're at home, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. So empathy is to look into others' feelings. Step your feet into others' shoes. That's what we mean by empathy. Yeah, it's a very good leadership skill. If you are empathy, if you are demonstrating empathy, you will win people's heart. Very good technique, but hard to follow. Because when you yourself are missing all the deadline, how would you ensure that you know you don't, you still support someone? Okay, sorry, I maybe not cover all the points. Yeah, so the main objective, stay focused, use some example. You are open in communication, open question to gain understanding. Right, yeah. So you have to be clear and open in communication. By that, what we mean is inviting other people's suggestion as well. When I'm saying, like I keep on asking you guys, do you understand, do you understand? If you have some question in between, I need to stop and answer your question. And you guys are decent guys, right? Everyone, guys and girls, like a and uh, lady and gents, you know. But what if, if someone is not understanding what I'm saying? So I said, no, 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 hold your question until I finish. At one o'clock, don't ask me anything in between. No. By the time you might have forgotten the question or it wouldn't have really mattered. So I need to adopt a style where I'm accommodating all the questions, suggestion, feedback. Yeah. Adopt your delivery to meet the mood of conversation. Like I'm not very great with jokes, but yes, if you can, that will be great. If everyone is feeling sad, tense, you know, make it light. M make the conversation light. Yeah. And then you can move on to the difficult conversation. Yeah. Congruence, to ensure that your message is communicated clearly and your conviction is evident, means you need to be congruent in what you say, how, how you say it, and delivery style. They all has to align. What you say, how you say it, and delivery style. Being congruent means being consistent across all aspects of communication. What you say aligns with how you say it. If I'm asking you to be polite and to do your work, I have to say it in a way that you'll do it. If I command you, no way, not happening. Yeah, just being a post doesn't mean that other people will follow what you say. Yeah, being congruent will aid with aid is help in your delivered message being received. You are anyway delivering the message, but is the other people receiving it? <laughs> yeah, you posted something, 
right? But what if the post doesn't receive, is not received, doesn't reach the right goal? Is it helpful? No. You feel good, oh, you already posted that letter or sent that email. But what if the other person hasn't received the email? Yeah. Okay, so this is Mirabend's rule where it's saying that 55% is your body language, 38% is your tone of voice, and 7% is your word. Okay. So whenever you are having difficult conversation, is your body language. Like in a video conference, it's a bit different setting to express the body language because I have to be close to the laptop and, you know, like wireless handset and there's like a lot of requirement otherwise I used to be the guy who used to walk when I'm lecturing yeah I can't stand at one place never right if I feel like oh Wilson is not getting my point then I'll go close to Wilson and all of a sudden Wilson becomes more alert isn't it Wilson yeah the moment you become more alert your receptivity increases isn't it yeah it might be that you might be thinking something related to this or something at work or something at home but the moment i'm tagging around wilson a bit closer to him all that thoughts start disappearing yeah and then as a tone of your voice and then is your seven person is your words yeah okay Next important skill is active listening. It's usual for an issue to arise in a professional setting, even between different organizations. When this occurs, you will need to utilize active listening to facilitate exchanging idea, priorities, and promoting outcome. Active listening demonstrates to your audience that what you are saying is essential, you value their point of view, you are seeking to understand their point of view and you want to work collaborative towards and resolution or outcome. Yeah. Who will tell me what is active listening? What do you mean by active listening? Active listening, active listening. Active listening, anyone? Oh, okay, sorry. I got it here. <laughs> listening actively, that's right. Pay full attention, right? Seek clarification, take notes using paraphrase. I like what Casper said. Everything else is good, is good, uh, correct? But that's more detailing. Using techniques like paraphrasing, summarizing an inquiry, a simple nod of head to show you that you understand. That's right as well. Right? There's no right or wrong definition. But active listening is I'm listening to you. At the same time, I'm paraphrasing something. Yeah. So, for example, if Michael said something, right, to me, I'll say, yes, yes, Michael, I understand. This is what you mean, right? And I will say it in my own words. Again, it doesn't involve operating mobile or doing anything else. Like full 100% attention. Yeah. No distraction. Yeah. Okay. That's very, very, very good skill. Okay. Um, let me try to... Okay, let's read one thing at a time. So, another important thing is you should pay attention. It's important that you listen to the speaker. Stop what you are doing. Be mentally present. Discuss the matter in an environment that will enhance the communication. Not distract yourself or audience. Okay? 
show that you are listening. Use appropriate body language, like nodding, dun, 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 but not continuously. Yeah, dun, 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 dun. and it looks like oh, you got lipoma, <laughs> right? Or paralysis attack or something. Yeah. Okay. But in between, you know, just to show that okay, you are there, you are listening, right? Isn't it, Ferris? Yeah. That you are listening verbs such as mm hmm, mm hmm, yeah, and go on, don't worry about me, I'm fine. Yeah, I encourage the speakers to continue indirectly. I'm telling you guys to do it. I mean, this is not a difficult conversation, yeah, but still. Helps me, helps me to deliver better. Provide feedback. Reflecting on what you have heard or stopping to clarify a point can be excellent demonstration of listening. If some of you ask me a question, of course I have to stop what I'm saying and respond to your question. Yeah, using a statement is like it's, it sounds like you are feeling this or you are saying this. You mean this? Use at appropriate interval. I mean this is I'm reading it word by word because that's very tiny. Yeah, don't judge. Allow the speaker to finish each point. Don't try to jump in. You are there to listen, not to give your point of view. By jumping in, trying to prove a point, you demonstrate that you are not listening. And then finally, respond appropriately. If the speaker is after feedback or alternatives or opinion, it is vital to give it appropriately and respectfully. You may need to be diplomatic in your response. You can be right and still be wrong delivering your answer. Ensure your response deliver a tone that respects speakers and give you confidence of your opinion. Okay. Facilitate a conversation. The steps for difficult conversation. You have to be direct. State the issue. Seek the feedback and build understanding. Use emotional intelligence. Review your position. Explore solution and summarize. Okay. Let's watch this video. Emotional intelligence refers to um, how well we handle ourselves and our relationships. There are four domains. Uh, Self-awareness, knowing what we're feeling, why we're feeling it, which is a basis of, for example, good intuition, good decision making. Uh, also, it's a moral compass. Uh, the second part is um, self-management, which means handling your distressing emotions in an effective way so that they don't cripple you, they don't get in the way of what you're doing and yet attuning them to them when you need to so that you learn what you must. Every emotion has a function. Also marshalling positive emotions, getting ourselves uh, you know, uh, involved, enthused about what we're doing, uh, aligning our actions with our passions. The third is empathy, knowing what someone else is feeling. And the fourth is putting that all together in skilled relationship. So that's what I mean by emotional intelligence. There are many definitions out there. The part of the brain, it turns out, that uh, supports emotional and social intelligence is actually the last circuitry of the brain to become anatomically mature. And because of neuroplasticity, uh, the brain shapes itself according to repeated experiences. So my argument is, hey, we should be teaching kids regularly over time in a systematic way self-awareness, self-management, empathy, and social skill. And in fact, uh, there are now enough programs and they've been around enough in schools that um, they're about to publish a huge meta-analysis looking at hundreds of schools and kids that had the program versus those that don't. And guess what? All antisocial behavior, you know, disruption in class, violence in school, goes down 10%. Pro-social behavior, liking school, well-behaved, up 10%. Academic achievement scores up 11%. So it, it really pays. It, it, executive function, uh, which is um, mediated by the prefrontal lobe, uh, both helps you manage your emotions and helps you pay attention. So as kids learn these skills, they also learn learning, basic learning skills. I think that the fact that that was an argument was one thing that caught people's attention. Then there was a little chapter on uh, called Managing with Heart, 
which argued that leaders who were sons of a bitch were actually uh, defeating the company's own mission. And I think that made a lot of people happy because they worked for people like that. Um, I don't know. There, uh, some people gave it to other people because they thought they needed help in this domain. <laughs> now, I'm sure there's a zillion reasons why uh, people like the book. I know IQ has been going up for 100 years uh, as children uh, encounter a more sophisticated cognitive environment as they grow. I don't know that we're becoming more emotionally intelligent. I like to hope we would, but I think that uh, the number of uh, intergroup wars going on, the intergroup hatred going on, uh, the um, you know levels of familial abuse, the, in other words, indicators of emotions out of control in dangerous ways, don't look that great, which is why I, I'm a very strong proponent of getting these social emotional learning programs in every school worldwide. And you have to remember that emotional intelligence is a range of abilities, self-awareness, emotional self-management, empathy, social skills. Women tend to be better than men on average uh, at empathy, particularly emotional empathy, sensing in the moment how the other person is feeling. And also it's at social skills, at keeping things feeling good uh, between people and, and groups. Men, on the other hand, tend to be better on average at um, self-confidence, particularly in groups, and at managing distressing emotions. But what's very interesting is if you look at, at leaders who are in the top 10%, there's no difference between the men and the women on any of those variables. In other words, you have a whole human being. So I would say that on average, there probably are differences, men and women, uh, in this domain of ability. But as people develop their skills, as people become more effective, they pick up strengths in areas that they need. I think that uh, emotional intelligence is a universal, but it looks different in different places. Uh, you know, Japan has a very rigid set of rules of social interaction. Lots of subtleties. Americans typically blunder into the Japanese system, don't get what's going on. And, um, you know, it's embarrassing, but they wouldn't recognize necessarily emotional intelligence in, Jap in, in Japanese setting. Brazil is a very different culture. It's very outgoing, uh, you know, kind of like an Italian culture. Uh, and so it would look different there. But I think the fundamentals are the same. Okay, so we learn a bit about emotional intelligence. Yeah, uh, the link is in the PPT in a footer, so I'll share the PPT once once we are done here. Yeah. Right. So this is like four types of uh, you know demanding thing. Yeah, on a win-win solution, win-win situation. The first is negotiate. Both of the parties are assertive. Everyone able, able to see my screen, yeah? Okay. Right? Let's negotiate and win-win situation. The extreme opposite is withdraw, which is a lose-lose situation. Yeah? Either very passive or very aggressive. Yeah? Up here is demand-lose, win-lose, demanding situation. One person is winning, other is losing, and concede. You lose, let others win. Yeah, you give up and let someone else win. Yeah? Okay. Next is to provide the opportunity for stakeholder input, the language of engagement, adapting your delivery style, respond to question op openly, honestly, managing behavior, and confirm the understanding. Yeah? These are some of the ways you can provide the everyone else, the stakeholder, to provide an input, yeah? Refer to support service. Support service could be a mentor, could be some of your friends, yeah, who is ready to help you out with, uh, you know, thank you, Frederick. Yes, uh, something, you know, to really uh, seek help for, yeah, it's called support service. 
coaching to identify barrier, workplace well-being, professional development, employee assistance program, incident response, a GP, a psychiatrist, GP is like doctor, yeah, general practitioner, not a surgeon, like doctor is a broad term, could be from a minor thing to a big surgeon. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to read. Mental health advocacy crisis and GP. I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, but they are just put in a picture form. And finally, evaluate your effectiveness and follow up thing. Like whatever has been done, if you don't seek the feedback, how it was been delivered, what's the point? You don't know whether it was effective or not. Yeah. These are some of the self-evaluation questions. Ask yourself this question, what worked well? What did you work well? What suggestion you have to improve? And there are some specific questions as well. Yeah. I think it's a part of assessment as well. I mean, not this one, but some of something like this. Finally, seek the feedback and respond to the feedback. Improve the effectiveness of conversation and determine an action plan of how and what you will improve upon. Cool. Um, any questions? Okay. 